This morning we're going to talk about Jesus the Good Shepherd. Mia, if we can have that first slide. She's on to it. Thank you so much. And uh, I'm just going to unpack four thoughts this morning that I think just help us to capture something of what we need to grab hold of in terms of, of the Christian foundations that we make take hold of the opportunities that God has for us in 2021. Pastor Sharon's been speaking to us about 2021 being a year of opportunities. I've been asking myself, what do those opportunities look like for me? What do they look like for you? What are the, some of the things that I need to grasp hold of that I can walk into those opportunities that God has for me? So we're going to be looking this morning at John chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. And I've got a couple of slides just with the first part of that passage of Scripture. I'm reading from the uh, New Living Translation, so you can look it up on your, on, on your device this morning, or you can look at the screen, or maybe you've got a Bible with real pages in it. You hear the rustling of pages, that'll be cool. Awesome. As we get to this passage, I just want us to um, think for a moment or two, or maybe I've skipped, if we can go that to this, thanks Mia, to this, um, this screen. You know, life for a Palestinian shepherd was hard. Jill and I had the privilege in 2019 of going to Israel and just seeing. It's amazing the sheep even survive, you know, in some of the country that they're in. I thought being a good Kiwi boy, I'd try and call these Palestinian sheep, so I used my best Palestinian dialect and tried to speak to them, a little bit of Kiwi, had absolutely no response. Because, you know, the sheep know the shepherd's voice. Now, in New Zealand culture, um, I remember, you don't see it so often now, driving through a mob of 100, 200, 1,000 sheep. Anyone had that experience somewhere? Yeah, a few hands around the country, and you kind of make your way through. And we kind of think, well, the sheep just look after themselves. But this kind of picture that's been drawn upon in this passage of Scripture is of a shepherd who leads the sheep, who knows the sheep intimately by name, who guides them into places of pasture. And there were no fences. You know, often there would be scree slopes leading into ravines or deserts, and the sheep without the shepherd to guide them would be lost. Sir George Adam Smith, who traveled Palestine, and he wrote, this description of a Palestinian shepherd, much like the one you see on the screen here, except this one's a little bit more modern, isn't he, because there are buildings and things in the background. On some high moor across which the night hyenas howl, you meet the shepherd, sleepless, far-sighted, weather-beaten, leaning on his staff and looking out over his scattered sheep, every one of them on his heart, and you understand why they gave the name shepherd to their king as a type of self-sacrifice. Constantly vigilant, fearless, courage, patient for his flock, where the necessity were the necessary characteristics of the shepherd. So keep that picture of the shepherd in mind as we come to this passage in John chapter 10, verses 1 to 18. Thanks, Mia. We are ready for that slide now. The good shepherd and the sheep. I tell you the truth, anyone who sneaks over the wall of the sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate to him, and the sheep recognize his voice and come to him. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And after he's gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them, and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. If we can have the next slide. Those who hear Jesus... Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what it meant, so he explained to them, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came to me, all who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and find good pasture. The thief's purpose is to steal and destroy. My purpose is is to give them a rich and satisfying life. That has to be one of my favorite passages of Scripture in the Bible. I know it's one of Pastor Sheridan's. The thief comes to steal and to destroy. But Jesus has come that you and I might have a rich and satisfying life. That doesn't mean that life won't have its problems. That doesn't mean there won't be difficulties. That doesn't mean there will be obstacles to overcome. 
that the goal of the shepherd is that the sheep might thrive, that they might find a rich and satisfying life. And that's a prophetic word that we carry this morning. That's God's desire for you. That's God's desire for me. The first thought I want us to think about this morning is that anyone who comes over the wall is a thief and a robber. I wonder this morning what's coming over your wall. I wonder what's coming over my wall. This is a picture, you know, in the, in the Palestinian context. It wasn't possible to kind of put the sheep into, you know, a sheep, uh, a sheep corral or, or whatever, or kind of like sheep gates by the shearing shed or whatever it might be, or to fence them in. So the shepherd would create an enclosure for the sheep to gather in. And sometimes the shepherd himself would sleep across that enclosure so that nothing could get to the sheep without first going past the shepherd. As leaders, we are responsible for the sheep. We all have leadership responsibility. Who are the people that we influence? Who are the people in our world, our family? How are we being the good shepherd to them? How are we stopping the thief to come, to kill, to rob and destroy? I believe God's really stressing in 2021 the importance of godly character. As we're thinking about godly character, a passage in the Bible that came to mind was Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 26. I haven't got it on the screen, but look it up in your Bibles. Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 26. Some of us will be familiar with this. This is the passage talking about the fruit of the Spirit. If you're at home, you might like to look it up. But the Holy Spirit, verse 22, Galatians chapter 5, produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading In every part of our lives, let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. We're living in a season where God's calling us as men and women to godly character. One of the the characteristics of the good shepherd is that they're always looking to restore the sheep that are lost. Gillian and I have learned over 30 years of being involved in leading churches that church life is messy. And the reason it is messy, I've come to the conclusion, is because church is all about people. The church is the only organization that doesn't exist for itself. It exists for people. It exists for reaching the lost. And people's lives are messy. And so church life can sometimes be messy. But in the midst of that, understand that the good shepherd comes to save those that were lost and to restore them to his kingdom. And we have an opportunity to be part of that. I'm so glad that as Activate Churches, we have a priority on reaching lost people. We want to see them come to know Jesus, the Good Shepherd. We want to see them heal and restored. We want to see them lead that rich and satisfying life. And friends, sometimes that's inconvenient. Sometimes it's messy. Sometimes there's a cost. But will we pay that cost in 2021 to see people united to the Good Shepherd? The second thought I want to leave with you this morning is that shepherd enters through the gate. Jesus explains, he says, uh, later on, he says, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who will come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely to find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to kill and destroy. My purpose is is to give them a rich and satisfying life. You know, sometimes as Christians, we can have the mentality that it's like a fortress. You know, I'm just kind of hunkering down, and um, just a fortress mentality, and no matter what the world throws at me, I'm going to be safe. But the picture here of Jesus the shepherd is that the sheep come freely in and out of that place of safety, and you and I have been redeemed that we might go and we might reach those who are lost. We might reach those who need to come in to the kingdom. The good shepherd doesn't lock us away and keep us safe, but he leads us out freely to good pastures. You know, sometimes it's a challenge, isn't it? We're part of an Activate group, and we enjoy being part of that Activate group. But will we allow others to come and join us because they need to experience what we're experiencing? Sometimes it's a challenge in our nation 
when God is bringing other nations of the world to our nation because he wants them to come to know Christ? And will we sacrifice the comforts that we enjoy in this nation to see other nations come and find Christ, that this nation might be all that God intended? And so God challenges us in that whole realm. And the thief doesn't just come with us like with satanic attack. I don't want to dismiss that. The thief does come to kill, to rob, and destroy through satanic attack. But often, the thief will come to kill, rob, and destroy through our own fallen human nature. Low self-esteem, fear, doubt, rejection, condemnation, unforgiveness, trauma, disappointment, sickness can be footholds that the enemy can use. And some of the reasons we don't see the thief coming is that we're distracted by addictions and false comforter, comforters like food and possessions and unhealthy relationships. And in the midst of that, Jesus talks about the armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 to 18. These are some of the principles that we need to take hold of if we're going to enter into our God-given future. We need to know what it is to take hold of the armor of God. We need to understand what it is to be men and women of godly character, men and women whose yes is yes and whose no is no. And again, if you've got your Bibles, look at Ephesians chapter 6 and verses 13 to 18. Therefore put on every piece of God's armor so that you'll be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle you will be standing firm. Stand your ground putting on the belt of truth, the body armor of God's righteousness, and for shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news that you will be fully prepared. In addition to these, hold the shield of faith to stop the fiery darts of the enemy. Put on the salvation, helmet of salvation, and take up the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. The armor of God is made up of salvation. It's understanding that Jesus has set us free from our sin. But it's also made up of godly character. And it's also made up of understanding and application of the Bible and prayer. Friends, if we're going to stand on the Christian foundations that are going to take us into the opportunities of 2021, we need to understand that we're not only set free from sin through Jesus' death and resurrection, but we're to be men and women of godly character, we're to understand and apply the Bible, and we're to be men and women of prayer. The third thought for this morning is that the gatekeeper opens the gate and the sheep recognize the shepherd's voice. This is verse 14 of John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and they know me. Just as my father knows me and I know the father, so I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep too that are not in the sheepfold. I must bring them in also. They will listen to my voice and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Gillian and I have been married for 36 years, and during that time we've had some great times and we've had some difficult times. We've had some times of success, we've had some times of failure. But through all of those experiences of life, we've learnt what it is to hear one another's voice. It's a, a funny thing, I was going to say a scary thing. Well, it doesn't necessarily need to be scary, but you know, sometimes you find yourself knowing what the other person is going to say before they say it. Have you had that experience? And hearing the voice of God is a little bit like that. God has created us in His image to hear His voice. And hearing the voice is more of God is more intuitive than you think. And the more you respond to the voice of God, the more you'll hear the voice of God. The more you understand God's ways and God's purposes as you read the Bible and as you pray conversational prayers, prayers that aren't the shopping lists of what we want, but prayers saying, God, what it is, what is it that you're wanting to speak to me in this situation? The more you come to know his voice and can be led and guided by that voice. And sometimes I have people ask me and they say, Michael, how do I know I'm hearing the voice of God? And I always ask myself these two questions. Is what I'm thinking honoring to God? And is what I'm thinking going to help other people grow closer in their relationship to God? Is it going to help me to grow closer in my relationship to God? And if it is, it's safe to proceed. You might have heard me say this. I've said it a few times. 
I don't know whether this is a good thought or a bad thought, or I don't know whether this is, sorry, is a Michael thought or a God thought, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, wants us to understand that hearing the voice of God is so that we might share the blessing of Jesus with others. There are always other sheep that are not in our sheepfold and wanting to bring him in. And the third point this morning is that the shepherd calls the sheep by name and leads them out. John records in verses 17 to 18 of John chapter 10, The Father loves me because I sacrificed my life so I may take it up again. No one can take this life from me. I sacrifice it voluntarily. For I have authority to lay it down when I want to and to take it up. For this is what my Father has commanded. Following the Good Shepherd will always involve sacrifice, and it's going to, if we're going to embrace the purposes of God for our lives. The Good Shepherd is always concerned for the sheep and for their safety, even in times of discomfort. So pulling this all together, and hopefully you've got the slide with the four pictures on there, I can see it. I want to pick up on what Pastor Ray was sharing about last week, that sometimes asking ourselves questions can unlock the wisdom of God for our lives. So here are some questions I want us to consider in this area. The first point was, anyone who sneaks over the wall is a thief and a robber. Notice that it says, anyone, not anything. People will encourage us in the purposes of God for our lives, and people will distract us from the purpose of God for our lives. Who are the people that are influencing your life and my life? Are we being robbed of a rich and satisfying life by the influence of others? I want us to ask ourselves these questions to kind of unpack this. Why am I discontent? What do I believe I'm missing out on? Is it God's purpose for my life, or is someone distracting me from God's purpose? You feel that disease within you this morning. You kind of feel that God is stirring something. God, what are you saying in the midst of that? Is this something you wanted me to embrace? Is this a distraction for my life? Secondly, the good sheep enters through the gate. The good shepherd doesn't lock up the sheep against their will. The shepherd has the best interests of the sheep at heart, and the sheep can come and go as they want to. And the purpose is that you and I might lead a rich and satisfying life. Friends, whatever season you're in, as difficult as it may be, as triumphant as it may be, there's nothing better than getting engaged, is it? Man, that's great. These guys are probably just, you know, levitating an inch or two off their seats. You know, and Liam, that's amazing. And um, Liam's mum and dad are here too. Where are they? So somewhere over, can't see them, there, we want to honour you guys, Um, this is just a great couple, known them probably for over 30 years, and um, yeah, we just really honour you guys, and um, yeah, thank you for Liam, and thank you for the, you know, the godly parents that you are, so um, yeah, we honour you, let's give them uh, some appreciation this morning, (laughs) Kerry and Janine, great people, that's wonderful. Are you being robbed of a rich and satisfying life by the influence of others this morning? Doesn't mean that life will always be safe. Disappointments and failures will be stepping stones to the purposes of God. But what areas of our lives is the Good Shepherd calling us to take a step of faith into our God given opportunities? The sheep recognize the shepherd's voice. It's really funny, you can see some YouTube clips of people like me trying to call sheep. You know, and there's, oh, who is this guy? Orchardist, not interested in animals, not responding to him. And then the shepherd comes up and calls the sheep in a Palestinian context, and they come flooding towards him. They know the shepherd's voice and respond. As Christians, we can all learn to hear the voice of God. If you've accepted Jesus' leadership and forgiveness for your life, and you've invited the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you, Hearing the voice of God will be more intuitive than you realize. The more you listen and obey, the easier it will be to hear the voice of Jesus. Just ask yourself, is what I'm hearing honoring to God? Is it going to help me take steps closer towards Jesus? Will it help others to take steps closer towards Jesus? Then step out. Mistakes, and you will make mistakes. Mistakes are stepping stones to success. And lastly, the good shepherd 
expectation is that when we're called, we will come. Jesus, the good shepherd, is more committed to our growth than we are. He loves us so much that he's not prepared to leave us as he found us. The thought that I had here is that when we don't move in obedience to what Jesus is asking us to do, not only do we place ourselves in danger, but we sometimes place others in danger. So this morning, what is it that God is wanting you to step into that will unlock something, not only in your life, but in the lives of others? Surviving is not an option. The Good Shepherd wants you to thrive. If you feel that you're just surviving this morning, the Good Shepherd has so much more in store for you. There will be times of suffering. There will be times of heartache. But the journey through that is that you will know a rich and satisfying life. It doesn't mean it will all be easy. But you'll know that God is with you and that God is for you. In what areas of your life have you settled for the status quo? I had a real sense this morning that some people have just settled. The Holy Spirit saying some people have just settled for the status quo, that this is my lot. And I believe the Holy Spirit's challenging that this morning. No, I want you to have a rich and satisfying life. You know, there was that song that we sang right back at the beginning. Um, I wrote it down. It, I felt it had a real prophetic edge to it that Tyra chose for us this morning. I'm going to see the victory. And then went on to say, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you use it for good. Right now you're in a, state, a time of status quo and what the enemy intended for evil, God is wanting to use for good that you might step into a rich and satisfying life. And I encourage you to do that.